Hello students, from today we are going to learn a chapter called Electrolysis and it's one of the very important chapter as per the board exam is concerned and in this chapter you will see a lot of reaction, okay? So let us start the chapter called Electrolysis from today's students. So do remember, the vessel in which we carry out the process of electrolysis, you can see the vessel out here, vessel is there. So the vessel in which we carry out the process of electrolysis is called voltameter or electrolytic cell. Do remember, the vessel in which we carry out the process of electrolysis is called voltameter or electrolytic cell. Okay, so it is a, what is voltameter or electrolytic cell? It is an apparatus in which the process of electrolysis is carried out, we say. And in this process, what we do, we dip two rods inside the vessel. And those two rods are referred as electrodes. And electrodes are the rod through which electric current passes, we say. So if anyone asks you what is electrode, you have to say these are the rods through which electric current passes. And do remember this rod is of two types. One is called anode, the other is called cathode. You can see out here, I have written anode for A, C means cathode. So electrodes are those rods through which electric current passes. It is of two types, anode and cathode in which anode is referred as positive terminal plus cathode is referred as negative terminal. So you can remember this way, you may get confused, no? which is anode, which is cathode. So always remember in alphabetical order, what comes early? A, then comes C. So A first, then comes C. And when you say <coughs> positive, negative, so always remember positive comes first, negative comes in. Second, because whenever you say, do you say God and devil or devil and God? We always say God and devil not devil and God. Similarly, will you say bad and good or good and bad? We always say good and bad. So similarly, we write positive first, then negative. First positive, then negative. So do remember student, the vessel in which we carry out the process of electrolysis is called voltameter or electrolytic cell, inside which we dip two rods called electrodes through which electric current passes. It is of two types, anode and cathode, A, C, positive, negative, in which anode is positive and cathode is negative terminal, we say. And always remember, whenever during electrolysis current flows, okay, it flows from anode, you can see the sign out here, it flows from anode to cathode. So the flow of electric current takes place from anode to cathode. So remember, whenever the electric current flows, it flows from anode to cathode. So now you can remember this way, the flow of current in electrolysis takes place from dash to dash. So many write cathode to anode and many write anode to cathode, right? So do remember, flow of current means A to C, was alphabetical order, A to C means anode to cathode takes place. And whatever solution we put inside this shell, electrolytic shell or voltameter, whatever solution we put inside it is called electrolyte, okay? Whatever solution we put inside is called what? Electrolyte. So now let us see what is electrolyte students. These are those substances which conducts electricity in molten state or fused state or in aqueous solution. So the solution which we put out here is called electrolyte and they conduct electricity in molten state, fused state or in aqueous solution. Molten state, you know, know it's in molten form. Fused state means powdery form. Molten state means molten form. Fused state means powdery form. And your aqueous solution means when you add water to it. Aqueous solution means when you add water to it. So electrolyte are those substances which conducts electricity in molten state, fused state or in aqueous solution we say. And some example of electrolyte is given down, molten lead bromide, molten lead means PB, bromide means Br, so the form, PB, Br2 is the formal of lead bromide and this two is coming because of the valency of lead. So molten lead bromide, fused NaCl, copper sulfate solution are the examples of electrolyte in which lead bromide is in molten state, in which NaCl is in powdery form and in which copper sulfate solution there is not only copper sulfate there is but there is what also water. So, so you all understood till here. So the vessel in which we carry out the process of electrolysis is called voltameter or electrolytic cell in which we need two rods called electrodes through which electric current passes. It is of two types, anode and cathode, A, C, positive, negative, good, bad. And whenever the current flows, it flows from anode to cathode and goes back to battery. Okay, the flow of current takes place from anode to what? Cathode students. And the solution which conducts electricity is called electrolyte. And it conducts electricity in mole state, fused state or in aqueous solution. And examples are here, I said you just well ago. If 
you want, you can repeat the video also, okay? But do remember one thing, pure electrolyte never conducts electricity. Pure electrolyte never conducts electricity. In order to conduct electricity, either our electrolyte has to be in molten form or infused it or in aqua solution, then only it conducts electricity, but not in the pure state. So why pure electrolyte does not conduct electricity? Only it conducts in molten state, fused state or in aqua solution, but does not conduct in pure state. Why? We have learned in chemical bonding chapter. In pure state, the electrostatic force of attraction. We have learned in chemical bonding chapter. In pure state, the electrostatic force of attraction between the ions will be very high, whereby they will not dissociate to produce ions and hence they don't conduct electricity. But when you keep it in molten form or in a fused state or in aqueous solution, that electrostatic force of attraction between the ions will decrease, whereby they will dissociate to produce ions and they conduct electricity. That's why we have to take it in molten state, fused state in or in aqueous solution to decrease the force of attraction, whereby they break down to produce ions and they conduct electricity, but not in the pure state. In pure state, the electrostatic force of attraction is very high, so therefore they will not dissociate to produce ions and hence they don't conduct electricity students. Hope so, you all understood till here. Let us proceed further. So let me take one example of electrolyte as fused NaCl. Okay, I have taken the example of NaCl students. Now, once the current will come from here, electric current will come from here, anode to cathode, it comes from anode and goes back to the battery from cathode. As this current strikes sodium chloride, it will dissociate sodium chloride into two parts. And dissociation is shown by reversible sign. Dissociation has to be shown by reversible sign. And it will dissociate it into Na and what? Cl. It will dissociate into Na and Cl students. So NaCl will break down into Na and Cl. In which sodium valency is plus 1. So we write here plus 1. And chlorine valency is minus 1. So you have to write here minus 1. So you can see out here students, whenever sodium chloride dissociate, it will dissoci dissociate into Na plus and Cl minus ion form. Okay. And such reaction is called dissociation reaction because you can see in NaCl there is no charge. No plus, no minus, right? So it's neutral solution and it is producing ions. So when a neutral solution dissociate to produce ions, such reaction is called dissociation reaction which is also known by the name ionization reaction. So when a neutral molecule dissociates to produce ions, such reaction is known as ionization reaction or you can even say dissociation reaction. Since ions are produced, therefore we call it ionization reaction or you can even say dissociation reaction. And do remember, so, such reactions are always reversible. Such reactions are always reversible. So whenever the electric current comes from it, it will dissociate NaCl into Na plus ion and Cl minus ion. And such reaction is called ionization reaction or dissociation reaction. Now we can see positive charge ions are called cation. You have learned in lower class. And negative charge ions are called anion. Positive charge are called cation. Negative charge are called anion. And you know the famous dialogue, opposite pole attract. So plus will be attracted towards minus and minus will be attracted towards plus. Minus will be attracted towards plus. So do remember minus will get attracted towards plus and plus will get attracted towards minus. What I mean to say is cation will migrate towards cathode and anion will migrate towards anode during electrolysis process. So again here also you get confused. During electrolysis process where does cation go? anode or cathode, where does anion go, anode or cathode. So remember the dialogue this way, C goes to C, A goes to A, C goes to C, A goes to A, means cation will always migrate towards cathode and anion will always migrate towards anode. Now you can see here, this being cation migrate towards cathode and this being anion migrate towards anode. Now let us see how the reaction occurs at anode and cathode, okay. You can repeat the video as I said you. Now we are going to see how the reaction occurs at anode and what students? Cathode. Now you can see at, 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 at anode who went? Sodium ion went. And at cathode who went? Chloride ion went. It's not chlorine, okay? It's chloride ion. Now we have to see the reaction of cathode and anode for this. Now you can see here the charge is which, what is the charge out here? Plus. So write plus. How many you see here? One. So write one. The dialogue is very simple, plus, so plus, one, so one. 
plus so plus one so one then you will write here electron e e means what electron and you all know that electron is negatively charged right electron is what negatively charged electron is negatively charged isn't it electrons are what negatively charged electrons are negatively charged okay so therefore you will write here minus sign because electrons are negatively charged now what will happen here pay attention so plus so plus one so one electron electron is negatively charged we wrote now as you do so the charge will disappear and it becomes any charge will disappear from here and becomes any in this case minus so write minus one so one minus so minus one so one again you write electron electron is negatively charged so write minus sign here now when you do so again from here charge will disappear and it will become only cl from here charge will disappear become cl now sodium is a metal metal is a good person they don't require company they can exist alone whereby it will get deposit downward arrow means deposit whereas chlorine is a non metal is a bad person it requires company therefore one chlorine will combine with another chlorine to form chlorine gas cl2 cl plus cl will give you cl2 gas and being gas it will get liberated so always remember during electrolysis c goes to c cation goes to cathode a goes to a and n goes to anode during electrolysis and gets either deposited or either gets liberated as gets deposited or it will get liberated as neutral atom there is no charge so neutral single so atom or neutral molecule no charge so neutral two so molecule so metal will usually get deposited as neutral atom because it's single non metal gets liberated as neutral molecule because it is two and neutral why we are saying neutral for both because there is no charge okay so do remember this much now you can see at cathode what is occurring here at cathode this plus means what gain of electron plus means what gain of electron plus means gain of electron so here the gain of electron is occurring e minus means electron and here you can see is minus minus means loss of electron always remember e minus means electron plus means gain of electron minus means loss of electron so at cathode what is occurring gain of electron at cathode what is occurring gain of electron is occurring at cathode what is occurring gain of electron so if the gain of electron occur we call it by the name reduction and you can see here what is happening here loss of electron is occurring and loss of electron means oxidation so always remember students during electrolysis oxidation occurs at anode and reduction occurs at cathode so why reduction occurs at cathode due to gain of electron and why oxidation occurs at anode due to loss of electron but again here also you will get confused which will oxidize which will reduce so the dialogue is very simple again a o to say a o what does that a o means anode oxidation a o means anode oxidation therefore cathode has to be what reduction so a o means anode oxidation so cathode has to be reduction so do remember here whatever points i have given you here during electrolysis c goes to c means cation will migrate towards cathode and a goes to a means anion will migrate towards anode after that they will get deposited or liberated this means deposited this means liberated as neutral atom or neutral molecule during electrolysis oxidation occurs at cathode oxidation occurs at sorry anode oxidation occurs at anode and the dialogue is a o so this means what anode always oxidation and reduction occurs at cathode oxidation occurs at anode and reduction occurs at what students cathode do remember so this much is all about electrolysis so far now i have already discussed about this two with you what is ionization reaction you can see there is no charge here so it's neutral molecule whenever it dissociate it produce na plus and cl minus why plus 1 valency plus 1 minus 1 because valency is minus 1 i have already said you this is there is no charge so it's a neutral molecule so whenever a neutral molecule dissociate to produce ions such reaction is known as ionization reaction right so these are those reaction in which neutral molecule dissociate neutral molecule dissociates to produce ions and they are usually reversible in nature and such reaction is also known by the name dissociation reaction so another name of ionization reaction is dissociation reaction students and during such reaction neutral molecule will dissociate to produce ions 
so do remember this much from this particular video if you want you can repeat the video okay students so do remember i have just introduced electrolysis with you so far so uh, you can repeat the video to understand it one more time so i'll again recapitulate in my next video thank you